A ball falls from the top of a building to the ground. How does the kinetic energy Ke compare to the potential energy Pe at the top of the building? So I'll draw a little picture. This is the building. Down here is the ground. So I'm going to take the ball. Oh, I'll draw the ball this time. There it is. And we'll grab the ball. There it is, and we're going to do work. Ugh. It requires an effort to lift it up. It's lifting, 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 uh, and we're there. And then if we drop it, it goes boo. It's going to accelerate and fall into the ground. Work was done. So let's do some more work on it, and uh, we'll get it up there. Uh, it's up on the top. It's in a state of equilibrium, and it's not moving. I did work on it, and the ball increases PA. So this is a small height, and up here is a large height. So at the top, the PE is its mg times its big height. Down here, its PE is mg times its small height. Now, small heights give small PEs. Large heights give large PEs. So let's just define up top it has a large PE and down here it has a small PE. So now we're going to take the same ball and let's not consider gravitational potential energy that is. Let's take it out here and drop it. It's going to fall. As it starts to fall it gains speed and then it finally hits the ground. So here it's moving slow and down here it's moving fast. I don't think we need the ball anymore. Let's just draw some vectors. Velocity vectors to be specific. So here its velocity is small and then as it descends its velocity vector would be large. So it's gaining velocity. We also know that Ka is one half mv squared. So if we have a small velocity, we have a small Ka. If we have a large velocity, we have a large Ka. That's interesting. Where the Pe is large, the Ka is small. And where the Pe is small, the Ka is large. What you lose in one form is what you gain in another. Are the potential and kinetic equivalent? No. At the top, Ke is not greater than Pe. Ke is less than Pe. C. Nice job.